Good evening. evening. Welcome to Wednesday night service. Will everybody stand for prayer, please? Thank you, Father, for another night, Father, another day that you've blessed us with, allowing us to see your marvelous light. I pray, Father, that you will come amongst us, Father, that you will dwell in the midst of us today, Father. We pray, Father, for your presence, Father. I pray that you fill this temple with your glory, Father. I pray, Lord, that you will anoint the speaker of this hour, Father, that, that the word that is spoken will be spoken so powerful that it will bring conviction, it will bring salvation today, Father. I pray, Lord, that you do mighty works, healings, everything wonderful that you do, Father. We thank you for everything you've done, you're doing, and you're continuing to do in and through our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Prepare your hearts for worship. Well, thank the Lord. It's been a good day today. Even a bad day with the Lord is better than a good day with the enemy. Let's turn to uh, 383 in our hymnal. 383. I'm satisfied. I hope you are too. 383. I felt within. Hallelujah, I have found him whom my soul so long has craved. Jesus satisfies my longings. Through his blood I now am saved. Feeding on the husk around me till my strength almost gone long my soul for something better only still to hunger on hallelujah I have found him whom my soul so long has craved Jesus satisfies my longings through his blood For I was and sought for riches, something that would satisfy. But the dust I gathered round me only mocked my soul's sad cry. Hallelujah, I have found him whom my soul so long had craved. Jesus sang. Satisfies my longings through his blood I now am saved. Well of water ever springing, bread of life so rich and free. Untold wealth that never faileth, my Redeemer is to me. Hallelujah. satisfies my longings through his blood I now am saved. Amen. Satisfied. Turn over a couple pages to 378. Back, actually back a couple pages. 378, he's a wonderful savior to me. Amen. 378. was lost in sin, but Jesus rescued me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was bound by fear, but Jesus set me free. 
He's a wonderful Savior to me. For He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a friend so true, so patient and so kind. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Everything I need in him I always find. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For he's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. He is always near to comfort and to cheer. He's a wonderful Savior to me. He forgives my sins. He dries my every tear. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For he's a wonderful Savior. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Dearer grows the love of Jesus every day. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Peter is his grace. While pressing on my way, he's a wonderful Savior to me. For he's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I think what would be a really good idea is if we all could go to the hospitals and visit people in the hospital, just to cheer them up, but most of all to get some perspective. Because when you go through the hospital, you see people that are sick or hurting, and there are some people that are on their deathbed who wishes that they could trade places with us. Mm -hmm. So when you're walking around with your head down feeling sad, remember there's people who wish they could took your, take your place. Yeah. And I know, I, I see every day people are like, oh man, things are bad, things are horrible. I'm at, you know, I'm homeless, I'm at the homeless man. And to be honest with you, we're really not homeless. <laughs> but um, they're feeling sad, they wanna be back with their families. There are people, who are in the hospital are never gonna see their families again, wishing they could have another chance. We need to make the best of what we have. Amen. Praise God. Now, do we have any uh, testimonies? Any testimony, how good God is, what he's done for us? Yep. Mm-hmm. 
Merci. Yes. Yes, they are. Amen. Yes. request or testimony? Yes. Uh, I just like oh. to praise the Lord. So many times in the past, He saved my life. Yeah. He saved, he saved my life. There were some times where I've done stupid things and I could have died, but He saved my life. And wandering around in the woods, He brought me here. He mm -hmm. brought me here and uh, He saved me. Yeah. So you got it. Amen. Sister Foster. Devotions. The devotions. Then if you really got to hear somewhere else, somebody will pull up a phone of something you were talking about that you were reading in the Bible. That's still him. Uh, uh, not just giving me another day, but because I've asked him to teach me. I'm a witness that he has not let me down. Every day I want to learn. Every day he gives it to me. So I'm testimony. I'm, I'm testifying to him. So he exists. He is. Amen. Yes, he is. And I have to piggy bank off of uh, what Dean said. I did a lot of stupid things when I was younger, a lot. And I spent a lot of money doing a lot of stupid things. And then when I found the Lord I, and I finally found out everything, the truth, I said, man, all the money I spent on all this foolish things, I could have bought something really nice or did something really good with it. And then, then I was really angry to de how the devil fooled me and tricked me. Amen. But you know what? God taught me to forgive myself. Amen. And I did. Brother. Let's thank you for the word for the church. Amen. Amen. Definitely. Any more prayer requests? Yes. One more. Uh, hold on a second. Cornelius. Amen. Brother Charles? Excuse me? Unspoken? Amen. Any more prayer requests? Brother Doug. Oh, he, surgery is over. He's doing good. They have him walking already. Not a lot, but he's, he's, he's walking. That's good. A lot sooner than I thought. He's going to the rehab soon. And Dave Warren's coming home tomorrow. And Dave Warren's coming home tomorrow. Praise God. These are all answered prayers. God answers prayers. One of these days, I'm going to come up because out of habit, I write down all the prayers. And then on my own time, I pray for it. But I see when I go through my book how many prayers God have answered. And one day, I'm going to come up and I'm going to read them off. I'm saying this before because Reverend Wooten is in here. He'd probably force me if he heard me say that. But, um, yeah, God answers prayers. And if we knew how much he answered prayers, we'd be praying more. Amen. Amen. Any more prayer requests? Praise God. Will everybody stand for prayer, please? 
Brother Stephen, would you pray over us, please? Lord God of heaven and earth, we, we praise you and bless you tonight. Father. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, God. Amen. May I get my ushers, please? Our usher, please. Brother Henry, would you pray over us? Oh, blessed Lord, we thank you for a wonderful day. We thank you for all that you do for us, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done on the cross of Calvary. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us and, and leading us into all righteousness and truth. Father, we ask that you bless this offering. Bless those who give and those who don't, for we all need you, Father. We praise you for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your giving. Reverend Ledger, would you lead us in another worship song? As Brother Greg was taking prayer requests tonight, a thought occurred to me that has occurred to me before. What if, when you got to heaven, you realized that every single person you prayed for made it? I believe God answers prayer. Do you? <laughs> 576. Jesus is indeed all the world to me. 576 in your hymnal. Strength from day to day without. 
when I am sad, he makes me glad, he's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, my friend in trial sore. I go to him for blessings and he gives them o'er and o'er. He sends the sunshine and the rain. He sends the harvest golden grain. Sunshine and rain, harvest of grain. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me. How could I this friend deny when he's so true to me? Following him, I know I'm right. He watches o'er me day and night. Following him by day and night, he's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me. I want no better friend. I'll trust him now. I'll trust him when life's fleeting day shall end. Beautiful life with such a friend. Beautiful life that has no end. Eternal life, eternal joy, he's my friend. right you must forgive I remember when I was younger uh, I used to be in the neighborhood where everybody you know back in those days used to crack jokes on each other they used to call it and they would just and there's more than just jokes they would say they would say personal things that hurt your feelings and whoever cries or whoever gets mad is a person who loses and they don't realize just how much pain that brings on somebody and self-consciousness, like, wow, really? Is this wrong with me? Is that wrong with me? And it follows them throughout their life. And I thought about that as I was looking at something, um, as I was scrolling through something on the internet, uh, on a YouTube, it was a lesson a guy was showing. He, was, he, he had a $100 bill, and he crumbled it up. Now, he first he said to the person, do you want this $100 bill? They said, yeah, sure. He said, how about now? Crumbled it up. They said, yeah, of course. So he threw it down. He kicked it. He stomped it, kicked it around more. He said, do you still want that $100 bill? They said, of course. And the reason is, no matter what you do to that, kick it, stomp it, even spit on it, it still has its value. It never loses that value. And that's like us. We've been through a whole lot in our life. But no matter how people have put you down, no matter what they said, God sees the value in us. He can still use us because we're valuable. He can see what other people can't see. So believe what God says about you. In the Bible, he says a lot of great things. And through Jesus, because God made us in his image and his likeness. 
That means that you're all beautiful and you have capability of a mustard seed. And a mustard seed is the smallest seed there is of all seeds. But its capability can grow up to 20 feet high, sometimes 30, and 20 feet wide. That's the capability that each and every one of us have of doing something great. So don't let any past hurts, anything anyone ever said about you to, to, to stop you from doing anything. I don't care if it was your own parents. Never mind what people say about you. Find out what God says about you. That's all enough time for you? A couple more minutes? <laughs> Thank you. I just put it over. Thank you and prepare your hearts for the word. Brother Steve. I don't, I'm not sure, but I don't think my trade-in value is as high as it should be. <laughs> I hope I'm worth something to, to the Lord, but sometimes I don't feel like it. And, you know, Miss, Miss Lynch was talking about the sins, and she wasn't a, she never did do anything really bad, and that's, I think that's a lot of us, including me, for so many years, I, I didn't, you know, I grew up thinking that once I was saved, I was always saved. So I thought I was good, and I wasn't killing anybody, and I wasn't, you know, doing, stealing anything. And so I thought I was basically a good person. But she said it. She said it all. When you, you sit down and start searching your heart and finding out what's inside there, and then that's when you realize what God's talking about. And, you know, some of the, some of the things that was in my heart, uh, you know, just phew, embarrassing. Some of them, you know, really not. When you think about it, it's, you see stuff on television all the time. The kind of stuff that was in my heart. And I'm not going to get graphic, but the stuff that's in that was in my heart uh, wouldn't be considered bad to a whole lot of people. Uh, but it is, and and just so much of it. You know, just don't even know what to say. And then Miss Black, Miss Black talking about forgiving. I've talked about that before. I don't have any problem forgiving people for big things. Uh, some of the, the big things in my life, um, I have no problem forgiving them. It just seems like in the last several years, it's been little bitty things. Yeah. And you know, holding it, not really forgiving anybody, and I'm still unclear about how some of how God looks at some of that but I know it, it's not good to have resentment and I hold resentment for little things you know with, with somebody that doesn't flush the commode you know in the dorm or they don't wash their hands and you know we're all coughing and, and wearing masks and got COVID going around and, and whatever and then you know people come out of the stalls without washing their hands and walk straight out the door uh, sometimes I have a hard time just letting that go it, it aggravates me and and God wants me to you know God wants me to not, not let that go you don't want me to hold that in and uh, that's hard to do sometimes and that's one of those things you know some some people may laugh at it and make jokes about it but that's one of those things that I know I can't do without God and when I start praying and asking God to help me with little things like that and then he does when those things start bothering me then I realize he's, he's helping me. It was him helping me because I've never been able to do that on my own. You know, I had to have Jack Daniels to help me do that. <laughs> and as we all know, that, that sure didn't help. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I told myself I wasn't going to go down that road tonight. It's hard not to, though, since that's, you know, I, that's basically what did everything to me. I got a woohoo. And speaking of woohoo, I was I was thinking that this this afternoon when I was I was looking at all of this and trying to decide what I was gonna what what scripture I was gonna use, I like always I, I looked at this and, and looked at the reference and to see where that came from and, and it all it all started getting me excited and I thought about Reverend Light. Reverend Light used to get up here and those of you that remember him. Uh, he'd get up here and start preaching. He'd get excited and go, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Remember that? 
Yeah, used to remind me of Curly of the Three Stooges. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's what it'll do to you sometimes. It'll get you excited. Yeah. Um, and last Sunday when I, 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 I gave, I got up here last Sunday and I sure, I felt like I crashed and burned. And, and I had my counseling the next day and Reverend Ledger and I was talking about it and and I, I feel like I realize I realized what what my biggest problem was, and I'm gonna, I'm going to try to fix that tonight. So I'm not going to have you stand for these these scriptures because I'm going to read like three different ones. And uh, but when I get finished, I'm going to pray. <laughs> uh, if you want to turn your turn your Bibles to Luke 14:26. You can do that. And while you're doing that, I'm going to read my first one because it's only got a couple of, couple of words in it, and it's from John 14, 15. And it says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. Luke 14, verse 26 says, If any man come unto me and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Um, when I, the first time, I don't know how long ago that was, but the first time I read that, I didn't get it. And I read it over and over and over, and I, I, I read it in the King James Version, and I, I read it in the, in the, uh, living Bible and uh, several different, and I just, I just didn't get it. I didn't understand it, and I just left it alone. Um, but I finally got it, and uh, I know if there's, if there's anybody out there that, that doesn't understand it, is what, what is, and hate not his father. Does that mean he's got, I got to hate my father? No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that. It's, it's, this when when they're saying hate, he uses it uses it several times in the Bible, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a couple other examples. But hate is being used as just loving less, um, and when you when you read it that way, it makes a whole lot more sense. Like in Genesis, and this is where I got so excited because when I first started reading the Bible, the first time when I, I've told you guys this before, when I first got here. Several years ago, I decided I was going to read the Bible all the way through one time, and I got—I was just fascinated by Genesis. Uh, there was there's several stories in Genesis. Um, it's not just the, the beginning of in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. It's not just that. Uh, some really good stories and, and some really good people in there. Um, but in Genesis 29:30 through 31, it says. And he went also unto Rachel, and he loved Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And he's talking about uh, Jacob worked, worked for Rachel's and Leah's father, Laban, for seven years, and, and Laban told him, after the seven years, I'm going to give you one of my daughters. And Leah was the oldest. Rachel obviously was the youngest. And Jacob really liked Rachel. And um, so he said, I'll work for you for seven years, and then you give me Rachel. He agreed with it. So on the night that, uh, the night of the seventh year, uh, Jacob was waiting for Rachel, and Laban sent Leah. And I don't understand all that. <laughs> they were they did some things back in in those days. I just don't understand how Jacob, you know, that happened without Jacob knowing it. But the next morning he woke up and was like, "Hey, why did you send me Leah? I wanted Rachel." And uh, Laban told him that in their country they don't do that. That uh, the, they don't give the the young daughter first. They have to give the firstborn first. So anyway, long story short, he had to go another seven years, and 
then he wound up with Leah. But the point, the, the reason I read it, though, is because this is right out of the Bible, and when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. Um, well, he, Jacob didn't, didn't hate Leah. He just, he loved Rachel more. He, he really liked, really liked Rachel. So, uh, and then in Romans 9, 13, uh, it says, as it is written, and it's written in Malachi, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. All right, so there's another one. Um, and, but this isn't all about hate. This is about love. This is about God, the, the thing that God the thing that God loves, wants the most from us is to us to follow his commandments. That's, that's what he wants. And he's telling us that if, if we love him, all we got to do is follow his commandments, and his commandments aren't that hard. They're really not that hard, and, and he'll even help you with them. <laughs> all we got to do all we have to do is follow his commandments. Um, don't steal. Don't don't kill. Don't don't commit adultery. Don't you know? They're they're really not hard things. Um, this is in First John five three says, "For this is the love of God," and I, I put that in bold because I, I read through the verse. Then I went back and read that again, and I'm like, you know, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. That means they're not burdensome. They're not difficult. Um, this is the love of God. It is, it is vain to pretend love to God while we live in op opposition to his will. And when I read that, and, and so many things go through my mind, is there has there been times that I really thought I loved God? No, there has. I'm not. I'm not going to say that as a question. Um, there has been a lot, a lot, a lot of years, whole lot of years. Uh, I thought I loved God. I used to say when I pray, "I love you, Lord," and and I realized not not too many years ago that I really didn't love him as much as I thought I did. And it, it, I thought it was, uh, it was a requirement of me as a Southern Baptist boy from a small town, country town in, in Tennessee, uh, I was brought up to love the Lord. So I just loved the Lord. And I said I loved him. And just like I used to tell some when I was younger and in my teens and 20s, telling a little girl that I loved her when I really didn't even know what love was. Um, it, obviously, it's not in the, on the same level, but it's the same type thing. I, I love you. I, I love you. I didn't know what I meant. Didn't know, I didn't know anything about love. Found out that I want to love him. I want to love him more than anything, and I can't, I can't help it if I don't love him the way that he wants me to or I don't love him as much as I want to because I haven't read his word, I haven't tried to keep his commandments, I, I haven't done anything uh, up, until, up until lately, but, but years ago. And, and I realized uh, when this hit me this afternoon, this is the love of God. Wow, the love of God. I know today what the love of God is. He wants me to keep his commandments. So tomorrow I'm going to start working on this even a little bit harder. I'm going to work on, on, on the little bitty things even that much harder. Um, to love him with, with all of our hearts. Oh, here, I want to go to Matthew. Yeah. Matthew, I know you all heard it, you all know it, Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Master, one of the apostles asked Jesus, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? 
Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and, and the prophets. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. To be crucified with Christ means to be freed from the ruling power of sin. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Interpreted means, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Dear Lord, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be up here tonight. Um, you know that that I, I read this and I thought about it real hard and I and I ask you if if you could just please help me help me to speak what you want me to speak and and help everyone understand it the best the best that that, I, that they can and I thank you for everything that you've done for me thank you for everything that you've given all of us and and dear lord I just pray and ask you to help us all love you more love you enough to to, to ask you on how we can keep your commandment and, and help us understand better how we can keep your commandment and, and which ones mean which and, and the little things like we were talking about earlier. We all need to understand that and I know that you can help us all do that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Um, I don't know I don't know sometimes the the best way to say things like when I come in here in the mornings and try to do devotions um, like I, I've even said in devotions before what I really what I ask God all the time right before I, I, my walk over here it's whatever I wind up saying I want everyone to be interested in it um, and and I want I want to talk about God, but I don't want anybody to, I don't want anybody to misunderstand or take anything I say the wrong way, because sometimes I, I, I wind up trying too hard, like, like I tried last week and like I'm almost doing right now. <laughs> um, if, if God, all God wants is for us, it, it, it's hard for me to even, it's hard for me to wrap my, my mind around it because, well, just because. All that God wants us to do is keep his commandments and, and love him. And if, if, we're, if we're loving our neighbors as we love ourselves, and that's, that's the two most important uh, uh, the most important commandments, obviously, I just I just went over them is loving God, loving Him with all all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. If you don't know how, ask Him. Um, that's that's what I'm I'm trying to do. How much is enough? How much do you know? Do you how much do I even know how much I love Him? I know that I love Him more than I ever have before, and I I can I can say that honestly. Because, like I said, I've, I haven't tested it on purpose, but I've tested it with, with the little things. And in doing that, it builds, up, it builds up my trust and my confidence and my faith. And then it gets me excited. And, and then it's like sometimes, like right now, I, even though I'm, I, I sound like I'm having a hard time getting it out, I'm really not, it, not for the reason because I can't get it out, it's because I'm really excited and I'm trying to say more than I, <laughs> than I can. I, my mind is working faster than my mouth is right now, and it's just excitement um, because I, I just want everybody to share. I, I saw this YouTube video that I, I've talked about before, and it had, it had 
five things that Christians should stop saying. And it can it goes along, goes for everybody. But there was a couple of them that, that really, really made a lot of sense to me and I really thought about. It. And the, it was, the number one was stop saying, using the Lord's name in vain. And that's one of the that's one of the commandments. And when when I've heard that before, when don't use the Lord's name in vain, I always thought that meant the, the GD word. Uh, that's just something that you don't say. But it, it's not just that. It's uh, and their their example in this video was, oh my God, you know, stop saying, oh my God. Christians should not say that. No one should say that, but especially if you're a professing Christian, don't say, oh, my God, or, or, or Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and when you're upset like that, that's, that's something that you shouldn't say. And, and not only should you not say it, it just doesn't sound good. I used to say that, I, and, and I, feel, I really feel bad about that. Thank, thank the Lord that he'll forg he forgave me for that. And... Um, I just, but it just don't sound right. My my buddy that I talk about often says that it, you know it's okay to cuss, you know just the the regular four letter word, um, you know the ones I'm talking about. It, it's it's okay. Well, it's not. It's not. It's just foul language, and and it's not. It it's just not good to. It, you guys remember? I didn't bring it with me tonight, but you you guys remember me. Uh, reading those things out of that New England primer about, you know, don't, don't talk ill. Don't, just don't say bad things. You just don't. And um, the other one, the other thing that, that was said that Christians shouldn't do, and I think that everybody should, should listen to that too, is don't tell somebody that you're going to pray for them if you're not going to pray for them. You know, if you're not going to pray for them, just don't, you know, don't say anything. But there's, there's, and I used to be the world's worst about that, about telling somebody I was going to pray for them and never did. You know, it just, it sounds good. Makes you look good. May, I guess it, you know, it, it's that pride, a little bit of the pride creeping in there. But yeah, I'll pray for you and then go on about your business and never give it another thought. And uh, I, I, practice that really hard lately if I tell somebody I'm going to pray for them I, I do even if it's a little one even right then sometimes I've, I've stopped right then and just turned around and said a real quick prayer just to make sure I did it make sure I said a prayer he didn't you didn't say you'd, you'd pray for 30 minutes just I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you yeah that's a, that's that's a really good one and then when you start when you start doing things like that and doing things that you're saying that you're going to do, that's when Jerome was talking about the other night, I think it was in Bible study when, or, or maybe even a devotion. And then you start talking about integrity. Little things like that will start building your own, building re integrity. Um, and that's so important because especially right now, uh, a lot of us don't have anything but our word. I know that's that's pretty much all I got with it. some Bible and some clothes and my word is all I got, and I sure would hate for everybody, all of you guys walking around here, um, talking about me and it being true. That would just that would be just terrible. So anyway, I'm gonna leave you with that. Um, my my watch is buzzing, telling me I've only got ten minutes and. Since I didn't have a whole lot of time to prepare for this message tonight, I'm just going to let that be a, a, a short one. I've, I really do appreciate, I know we, it's said often uh, when evangelists come up here for camp or revival or whatever, and, and the, one of the first things they say is, well, I've, it's an honor to be here. Well, it is. It's an honor for me to be here because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I I believe that He He wants me to be up here tonight. I don't know how many more times He wants me to be up here, but He wanted me to be up here tonight, and I consider that an honor to be up in here doing what He's asked me to do. Whether I do a good job of it or not, I'm doing what He's asked me to do. And that's what I've done, and I appreciate all of you, all of you listening to me. 
All right, let's stand for prayer. Doug, would you dismiss us, please? Amen.